The first thing that you know in order to create and manage your webhooks is by going into the admin portal. Once you move into the admin portal, you will see API and webhook section. Uh, this is where uh, this is the screen you would see because you don't have any webhooks. First thing you would do is uh, you would create a webhook. So I'm gonna do contact update um, webhook for now. And the first thing that we need to do is create a subscription. A subscription is basically an alert. So in here, the object type that I'm going to choose is contact so, because I'm interested in contact and I'm specifically interested in the updates of the contacts. Um, I'll quickly touch on the payload in a, in a few minutes, but uh, basically what I'm setting here up is I want to receive contact updates uh, into this particular webhook. And uh, for this particular example, you can see the subscription is created here. Uh, for this example, um, the first thing we're going to do is create a uh, webhook uh, it's sort of an API that you would create on your side for us to call and push the data to you. So um, for this example, I'm going to use this uh, site called webhook.site. It's a free website to test out. Um, and I'm going to give the target URL. So this is, imagine this is sort of your uh, home address or this particular URL that you would create. Uh, and I'm here, I'm going to put this uh, URL here. And the first thing I'm going to do is validate. So when I validate, you can actually start seeing the notifications come through. This is sort of a way to validate that the URL is actually working end to end before you go live. Um, and this is an example payload for uh, object of uh, contact uh, update. Here is the payload that you would receive. And this is everything uh, that we have for the profile. And at the end of the profile, we would also tell you what exactly changed. Is it the job title? Is it the department? Is it the employee account, et cetera, et cetera. So that you can actually not just receive the update, but also infer on what changed so that you can create workflows on top of that. Now, let's go back. And uh, one other thing that I want to touch on is the verification token. This is uh, uh, very similar to saying, hey, Zoom Info is going to send me a payload uh, onto this particular URL. I want to make sure that it's not coming from a malicious actor, but actually coming from Zoom Info. This is a validation or a verification process that you would create in order to create a, a flow for authentication. Um, this is the key that you can use uh, in, uh, in terms of like the validation. So every single webhook payload that you would receive from us, the header of the rest, uh, request will have this particular token so that you can validate that, okay, this request is coming from Zoom Info and not someone else. Uh, once you validate, you pass it through for your workflow and so on and so forth. Here, I'm going to save this particular webhook. Great. Now I have the webhook uh, created. Now let's uh, go into the Postman or sort of the API way to sort of see how we can modify this particular webhook. Uh, for this, uh, the best recommendation I would give everybody is go to our API documentation. And once you scroll to the top, you will see run on Postman. Uh, button. When you click on that, you will see the entire uh, uh, sort of collection come into your Postman. Everything is already available. We have uh, configured it. We have given examples for each of those. So use that. Um, so the first thing, obviously, for this particular thing, I have already authenticated. So I have the key. Um, the way you can modify the webhooks is you go into the Enterprise API, under Enterprise API, Scaling APIs, and under Scaling API, you will see Monitoring API and webhooks. Um, these are the different endpoints that we are actually using on the admin portal as well. Whatever we use to create a webhook is actually using this particular endpoint. So you can literally take this endpoint, build your own URL uh, UI on your site to allow your users to configure this. Um, let's go and get all the webhooks that we actually created. And because we already created one webhook, we should be able to see our webhook here. There you go. So we have the contact update, and the status is actually false. How do we now update this one? So what I have to do here is I want to take this particular, uh, the ID of the webhook. I want to go into the update webhook, and I have to pass that in as the update. And I'm going to remove all these things. All I care about is going to enable this one. So right now, as you see, it was um, false. I'm going to just make it true and pass it in. Once you do that, it actually can. You can see that it's uh, it's enabled. The same thing will be reflected here. If I get the webhook, there you go. And the same thing will be in the admin portal. It's all connected. It's all the same same process. Um, one other thing that I want to show, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, a feature that uh, only is available through uh, the APIs, is uh, being able to see what are the different payloads. Remember when I was creating a new webhook, I was actually showing uh, there was a toggle when you set it up. Let me actually go back and show. This particular payload type, um, in the API, you can actually configure and try to see what are the different payload types you can get. 
So for in this case, I actually have the same URL and here we only have one request. I'm gonna go back and say, um, let me go back to Postman. I'm gonna go back and say, give me the contact update, but I only want the, uh, the partial payload or the full payload is false. So let's try this out. And there you go, this is a new request. The, the, this particular uh, payload will only give you the changed attributes along with the basic information about the profile for you to map it on your site. Uh, but this is, if you compare the, the two payloads, this is a long list of everything, single thing that we have for a profile versus you only care about what changed in that particular payload. And that's basically what this is. And you can do that for, uh, for company also. So I'm going to do for company, let's try what a full payload will look like in this one. Perfect, there you go, we got the payload. As you can see, this is a company update and it is everything about the company and obviously at the end of the payload, we will tell you exactly what changed. Um, the same way, if you wanna do only the what changed, you can also do uh, full payload as false and you will receive only the partial payload which tells you exactly what changed and the payload uh, for that particular thing and basic information for you to map it on your site and update it. So this is sort of like how you can configure and manage your webhooks through our UI and uh, you know, through the APIs. I'm using Postman, for example. You can use uh, other API testing tools. Um, this is a quick example that we were able to build on Workato to give you high level on how you can use webhooks. Uh, Workout actually supports webhooks uh, uh, support in, in their own uh, platform. So the trigger here is that when a contact at Zoom Info is updated, in this case, I'm just putting uh, you know, a job title uh, has changed. And if the management is C-suite, then send an email with a congratulations, for example. If not, just update the record in Salesforce and move on to the next one. So this is sort of like a very high level example of what you can do in terms of creating some of these workflows and uh, manage your webhooks.